and singing like these kind of high notes where you're already like kind of putting your body through this emotional experience. It's very tough to kind of keep it composed. But, you know, then you look back and you maybe pat yourself on the back a little bit because it's like, OK, well, then at least you're writing songs, not about pizza and French fries and skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Hey guys, this is Jesse with Ghost Cult Mag, and I am here with Chris of Can't Swim. We are going to be discussing their new record, Thanks But No Thanks. Chris, I would love to do a breakdown uh, track by track with you today of the album, if you're cool with that. And I uh, would love to hear some feedback about some of your favorite parts, maybe some pieces that were hit home for you, or if you wanted to share or elaborate. So we can kick off with the first track of Nowhere, Ohio. Yeah, let's get into it. Nowhere, Ohio, we just put it out. Uh, kind of a funny uh, story of how it started. It was actually a melody kind of a verse that Danny had for one of his solo projects. And I was just driving in the car one day and it came up on shuffle on my Spotify. And I was like, oh, I know this voice. I'm like, oh, it's Danny, my guitar player. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, I love that little run. Like, I feel like we could kind of use that and, and change it into a can't swim kind of thing. At the end of the day, it kind of, the song finished not really sounding anything similar to his, but uh, is what we kind of started with. And I was like, yo, Danny, would you be cool with like kind of reworking that type of idea? Um, so the, uh, uh, what do you call that? The uh, the first draft of that song was actually called Danny's song. And then okay. <laughs> uh, lyrically, when I thought of the concept, we changed it. But um, yeah, so that's how it came together. Uh, actually, it was quite a quick turnaround because... Usually Can't Swim starts with a demo that I've slaved over. and uh, <laughs> But that one, that one was like brand new. I was just like, hey, why don't we try to rework this? And we all kind of reworked it together. And it was uh, within a day. It was done. So Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. Pretty I cool. saw that it was a like a nod to uh, Alkaline Trio and you being on a tour bus. Was it for Alkaline Trio or was it for someone else? No, that would have been so cool. Uh, I was actually... <laughs> um, driving good friends of mine uh boston manor they're mm -hmm. in this um so yeah i had the demo um and the melodies in my mind but the lyrics were kind of written um at that time and i just thought it was kind of a funny play on words because the matt skiba song i'm talking about is radio by Aquiline trio and he's talking about if columbus was wrong i would drive straight off the edge but the song is about talking about ohio and columbus is a, a major city in ohio so i just thought it was like a tricky uh, and that's kind of what the song is about. It's just like driving into the night, not knowing where you are, not knowing where you are in life. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe I'll just drive straight off into oblivion. Um, yeah. So that's how it came about. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So the next song will be, Can You Help Me? Sure. Can You Help Me? Another one of my favorites. We actually might try to release it before the album comes out as like the third or what would that be? Third single? Yeah. Pretty cool for Can't Swim. Usually... A majority of can swim songs is like i say something in the verse and then we say the same thing in the chorus i say and then, but this one this the same melody throughout the whole core all the three choruses but the words are different and it's kind of this like traveling story of me describing this relationship with this person so kind of like a radio pop nightmare that the <laughs> chorus doesn't have the same words but uh mm -hmm. we thought we thought it was pretty cool kind of like builds this momentum of like where's this story gonna go uh rather than a bumper sticker kind of course yeah it just it uh it talks about a friend of mine that passed away uh who just couldn't really figure it out it was um just a troubled youth of a lot of addiction and and um losing where they lived and kind of just my this was very long ago I was in my early 20s just uh how I was going through it and and how I could help them um and that's obviously what the song is about I was kind of looking up to this person I thought they were the cool kind of you know crazy life but I actually thought years later that they were asking me for help in that time and yeah that's how the song uh, came about musically can't even remember <laughs> I can't tell you <laughs> I don't remember the demo I do. I do. I do. Uh, that one I had, I sent it to the guys. It came out pretty close. Um, Danny kind of just cut the fat off of it, if you will. It had like this intro and uh, yeah, Danny was able to really kind of get the 
good parts and do those and get the bad parts, get them out of there. So yeah, that's how that song came about. I feel like that'd be a pretty tough subject to, to write about, but also Certainly. relatable to a lot of people. Certainly. I think that's why we decided to do that chorus thing I was speaking about, because mm-hmm. it didn't feel proper to like kind of stop the narrative. I, I think it's it's pretty um, engaging and enticing. And I think that's what we, we kind of just wanted to feel like you were just reading it off of a, like a, a news article or something. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like especially in recent years, it's gotten a lot worse, unfortunately. Sadly enough, I think you are correct. So... I really like this song, Me versus Me versus All of Y'all. Thank you. I'm excited to, of course, it wasn't the only one that I really liked. I also really liked Eliminate. We'll get to that later, though. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but I'm excited to hear uh, your thoughts behind it. Me versus Me, uh, yeah, it was also a big transition from demo to final version. Lyrically, it was close, or melodically, it was close, but Danny um, really kind of changed it to be more of the Can Swim sound. Um, it kind of just talks about the time spent doing this band and the, reg- you know, the quote unquote regrets or, or the things I've missed out on, um, you know, not being back at home, uh, falling out of relationships and friendships just because we're gone all the time and being on tour. Uh, yeah, kind of like tongue in cheek, like, uh, comparing myself to some of my favorite artists. So we have like, a singer of Pearl Jam, the singer of The Cure <clears throat> and the singer of the Lemonheads, kind of just, especially in the beginning of the band, I think I had a bad habit of like comparing um, my performance or my success to others. Uh, and that's why I guess it's me versus me versus all y'all. It just kind of felt like I was having this battle with myself. And yeah, the whole world was not, you know, not to sound cocky, but like <laughs> the, the, the people who come to our show <clears throat> was, were kind of watching me battle myself. So I think it was our, probably one of our favorites and that's why we released it first and i am proud to say that usually when i write about something i am kind of over it in, in some sort of capacity and that's how i'm able to write about it and and more like a reflection exactly i'm certainly not in that mindset anymore it's actually doesn't even doesn't even sound or feel like the same person i actually kind of uh think the complete opposite it is me versus nobody i feel very <laughs> blessed and uh very content and and calm, especially with the release of all this new stuff. It's a, it's I can actually fully just um, enjoy it now. It used to be quite a headache and a, and a stressful kind of thing, but now um, just uh, really looking forward to just telling people what I've been through and kind of being now an example of like, look, like it does go away if you write about it or you know do the work. So uh, yeah, I think that song. Um, we're going to be opening with it on our newest tour. We're all very excited about it. So. Excellent. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Um, the next one would be Met You the Day the World Ended. Yep. Uh, another one um, that we kind of wrote on the spot. So, so, yeah, I guess like the Matt Skiba, like hidden meaning behind this one. There's this band called The Tragically Hip, who is like kind of like Canada's Bon Jovi. I don't know. Like the, it's like the most pride they they played their last show and it was broadcast over every television in Canada. It was like, wow. yeah, they are like the most Canadian band. And my lady is Canadian and I had no idea who the tragically hip was, embarrassingly enough. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so... it's news to me right now, so. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah, two years ago or whatever it was, she started playing them in the car and I, I really enjoy the music. So they have a song called Ahead by a Century, and it's about, I'm not exactly sure, but I, I I took it as that he was kind of in awe of this woman that he was involved with, that, you know, that she was everything that he did and everything that he thought of what love and a relationship could be. Uh, she was ahead by a century, you know, she was just kind of this, this amazing person. And that song is a reflection on the woman in my life now. I uh kind of searched a lot of my life trying to find a partner that would be um able to handle me and, and this lifestyle and and keep me so interested and 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 so um yeah just uh, it just felt so confident when when I first met her and I think that's what um the guy from the tragedy hip was trying to relate to uh mm-hmm. so yeah song is, is is basically just an homage to that uh and obviously it's like maybe i think can't swim's like first love song usually it's mostly breakup songs and, and <laughs> sad and sadness but 
this one actually has a happy ending. I think it's funny. Like sometimes I'm like, I wonder if kids are going to be like, oh yeah, dude, the when the bridge is coming, I bet you she like leaves him or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I wrote it in front of her. She was in the studio. She comes on tour. She's a big part of my life in the band now. So it definitely felt uh, logical to put her a part of the lyrics and, and, and something that I obviously think about every single day. I'm with her every day. So it yeah. kind of just came, came out of me naturally. And that's what that song's about. That's awesome. I, I love that. Like, I love the super heavy personal spin that you have on that. Because I feel like there are so many songs that affect so many people. And so you kind of write it to put words down on a page that, you know, a lot of people experience. But this feels so personal to Big have time. that that band reference and then her and all of that happening at the same time. That's awesome. And congrats on the first love song. Thank you. I know. Crazy. <laughs> no, I would have never thought. <laughs> Life is surprising. It is. So next, your Paradox and Paradigm. I thought that was a very clever song title. Thank you. Yep. So demo stay pretty close. Uh, the lyrics, none of the lyrics changed. I was I was very happy with that song. Um, yeah, a little bit more of a reflection on the world around me. The first couple lyrics, uh, just kind of how I relate to how other people seem to relate to things like nowadays it kind of seems that anyone can get away with murder just like these these kind of like these last couple of years of obviously like a lot of the stuff that's been going on uh just kind of reflection on that and yeah just not feeling like i fit into it like um if you're a paradox on paradigm like even if you decide that you feel one way or the general people feel this way i've always kind of had trouble with a lot of those mindsets and yeah yeah kind of just uh being a little pissed off about it i suppose <laughs> <laughs> and like getting you know kind of um fed up with people making excuses like your future is part of your past you know kind of just like these these mentalities that people think that can just um be brushed along or, or kind of covered up and that always kind of um didn't sit with me very well and yeah sure. that's kind of what that's what the song's about <laughs> definitely a more morbid song title being i heard they found you face down inside of your living room that's right i'm yeah. so happy you are actually you have this list in front of you because i was like oh god i hope she doesn't like all right so track six and i'm like okay so... <laughs> which one is that <laughs> yeah yeah uh, <laughs> uh yes very morbid very sad very personal song um you know it was actually kind of a like kind of just using what you just said like I usually try to think of like maybe a tricky metaphor or something to like kind of hide the meanings of the song or, you know, like disguise them at least a little bit with the song titles. But mm -hmm. I felt this one was so personal and, and um, yeah, needed to kind of have the heart on the sleeve or whatever you want to say. So, yeah, it's, it's quite lengthy of a song title, but I do think it uh, is the most impactful part of the lyrics for me. Um, yeah, just uh, pretty literal kind of song mm -hmm. uh an experience that um you know i don't want to even say i went through experience that i i was a part of and and um and just the chorus is kind of just how it made me feel you know just thinking that uh, how, how lost i felt and how i kind of envisioned that it would be one way and they kind of decided to do it another way the bridge is kind of now what do i do do i follow suit do i continue you know so Again, um, very long time ago, uh, mm -hmm. I obviously I don't want to say I am over it or, you know, it, it's still incredibly I'm sad, but yeah. exactly. Things happen. And, you know, I hate to be even more morbid. I've even lost more people since that's happened and not from the exact same thing and sometimes from the exact same thing. So just kind of uh, my way of dealing with it in a, in a general sense is that, like, it's very sad when somebody decides to do that or... Um, or that, or or just happens naturally. You know, death is a is a part of life, and um, there's not much I have figured out to be cathartic or uh, helpful other than writing about it. So that song, um, as much as it's you know uh, a tragedy and, and very upsetting, it, it certainly has helped me, and I very very much hope that it has helped somebody else that has lost somebody. Um, yeah, so it was a tough one. It's actually. Again, not to be like, <laughs> like tortured soul poet guy, but it was actually the I think the very very first time I was performing a song and actually started to cry. It was the second or third time we played it, and I was like, yeah, this is really heavy. This is like, 
I need to like now when before we play it, like I like focus. Like I'm like, dude, like it's coming. Like, <laughs> like yeah. You know, and I've written some pretty sad things, but it's just like, yeah, it, you know, a lot of the times I'm singing and you know, relationship breakups or whatever, like the loss of some family members, they they comes into my mind when I'm singing about it. But you know, it's it was years ago, whatever. But yeah, that one I was like, whoa, like it came back that night. Yeah, so it's surprising yeah, how things can remain like pretty visceral even if a lot of time has passed by you are telling me <laughs> and, and 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 singing like these kind of high notes where you're already like kind of putting your body through this emotional experience uh it's very tough to kind of keep it composed but uh yeah w w which you know then you look back and you maybe pat yourself on the back a little bit because it's like okay well then at least your writing songs not about pizza and french fries and skateboarding <laughs> <laughs> you know makes you kind of feel good that you kind of got emotionally moved by something so. well, yeah i mean music you know it, at least how i feel and look to it as being kind of it's excerpts of your life it's it's like kind of you're putting music to like a journal entry essentially you know totally like, totally yes. and it's raw you're putting yourself out there and then sometimes it's tough because you have so many people putting it under a microscope <laughs> certainly certainly especially the internet has shown itself to be quite the critiquing audience so yeah hasn't it <laughs> yeah certainly <laughs> uh, okay so track seven is eliminate that was another one that i liked i liked the kind of i guess the chanty that you guys had the chanting in the chorus it felt totally. like a very like throwback to me being like a teenager listening to pop punk music <laughs> totally Awesome. I love to hear that. Yeah, eliminate uh maybe the most um forward politically charged song mm -hmm. of the album. Uh going back to Paradox and Paradigm, like just kind of being very upset. Uh, you know, I don't claim to be a politician in, in any regard. I, I I do not know the answers. And even if I did, I cannot fully put them into effect. I wish I could, but just kind right. of my <laughs> Yeah, I've, fingers crossed somebody gives me that power one day. But this song, uh, it's just my perspective. It's just my frustration, um, particularly with gun control and these poor kids dying. And like, I know, I know all the other sides and I, I get it. And I try to respect everybody's. Um, Being from Georgia, I I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you you deal with it a lot. Our drummer is from Georgia. He, when I sent him the song, he's like, I feel you, my guy. Um mm -hmm. But it's just like, it's just I, my, my, my biggest weak point was when, you know, these six, seven, eight year old kids were being gunned down. And the next day, these dudes are out on these podiums, like yelling that we need more. And like, sure, I, I don't know. But that just felt so upsetting to me. It just felt like. You are like a the monster. Was in the wrong yeah. Place. And it's just like, yeah, like making it feel like it was no big deal. Like, like, or, or, or like blaming it on something. And it's just like, all right, maybe in a couple of months, but like, you know, I just kind of like the song, I think is from my feeling of like, you know, imagine like getting that call, your parents do just knock down the door and kill them. Like, you know, it, it was just like so moving to, of course, like on, on the world's uh, screen, it was moving to a lot, a lot of people. So, um, like I said, I do not know the answers. I, I wish I did, and I wish I could put them into effect. But it's just my more um, my emotional reaction to those recent kind of tragedies, where I was just like, "Yeah, this is just." It, it was like too heavy. Like you know, I, yeah. I write sad, I write sad songs, but I, I just was like, "God, I've gone through nothing like that." Is <laughs> That is hard. Like I, 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 even to this day, I can't wrap my mind around it. It just must be, and like, and you know, the thing about their perspective on gun control after that, it's like you're telling me you want more when my six year old daughter just got bland. Like it, it's just, yeah, it, it's very, very challenging. So yeah, um, it's, it's like it is frustrating because you're just like we're concerned about something that's not alive over. It's yeah, so yeah. puzzling. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it, it feels like you're just slapping your head against the wall yes it's, it's challenging but uh yeah that's i'm glad you use the words you use we wanted to feel very fist in the air kind of you know um you know everybody in the room to feel some sort of emotion together and that's what we try to do with the recording of the song and mm -hmm. yeah I, one of my favorites as well i think it kind of sticks out a little bit from the other 10 it's a little more serious even 
um, musically other than the subject matter kind of feels a little heavier than the other songs and mm-hmm. i'm ha- happy it made the cut oh yeah for sure i i think that the record is stronger for it absolutely especially Thanks. given current events totally number eight is i've never paid a toll on the garden state <laughs> <laughs> love it uh a true statement uh definitely had a couple of working titles that didn't seem to really uh hit the spot i think the one was new jersey and jay uh kind of talking your ear off here but one of them was uh benny's go home which is this uh-huh. thing that people put on the highways in new jersey and benny's is a slang for like new yorkers okay so like a bunch of like you know dudes from the city in brooklyn will come to the beaches of new jersey and then the new jersey locals hate that so that was one of the titles um but i was like no one's gonna know what that means um and it's always been a joke to us in the band that we've kind of never done the work to like get an easy pass or pay the toll and it's just kind of this kind of inside joke um <laughs> The song lyrically is somewhat tied into that. It's very New Jersey. I talk about growing up. I talk about starting a band with these high hopes. And I thought we were going to be on, you know, hotels and tour buses. And in reality, the hotel is in the parking lot. We're sleeping at a Walmart. And uh, foolish me to think that, I, you know, if I became a member of a band, all the problems in my life would go away. And that's certainly not the case. And I spent, you know, kind of like the best years of my life um you know hoping that that would happen or you know so uh yeah kind of just like a coming to terms uh with what people tell you or what people think of success and uh it certainly does not come from other people's acknowledgement of what you do it has to come from within you um Mm -hmm. and yeah that's what that goofy song title is about (laughs) (laughs) i mean i also appreciate it from like the nostalgic standpoint when bands always had these ridiculous song titles yes yes that yes didn't necessarily tie in with the song but they totally. were perfect. <laughs> yeah yeah i hope i have achieved at least 70 percent of that magic <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> uh so number nine even my anger has issues yep 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 um that one pretty true to life of, of what the song is about just kind of being frustrated with this person yeah, I think I'm a pretty reserved man. I don't fight. I don't raise my voice. I am uh, contrary to what people believe. I'm this singer of this punk rock kind of band, but uh, I'm I'm a very calm, collected kind of guy. Uh, but sometimes certain people, certain <laughs> people that are clo- close to you can make you feel like words are not enough. And I've been very frustrated with this relationship in my past. Uh, a family member of mine. Yeah, just years and years of being aggravated so yeah i don't know if the lyrics of the song kind of end with like a happy ending because i I don't think it does and that's sometimes um a good lesson to learn in life sometimes i think i'm very guilty of like it can be fixed it will change it will get better but sometimes you have to just go like no this person is toxic this person is bad and yeah you have to walk away um and And that's so tough to do as a family member you were telling me, especially this one. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, you know, on a personal level, it's not. I don't think it's really mentioned in the song, but I have definitely come to peace with it and and distance myself in in uh, the proper amount of distance, and I feel way better about it now as an adult. But <clears throat> definitely was very challenging throughout my life. Uh, I've touched on a, a similar subject in, in previous Can Swim songs, but it's still still sharp it's still uh you know it's it's still very active in my life so even my anger has issues is uh i felt it was very important to have it on the album <clears throat> and that's how that one came about uh demo Ooh, actually yes that one has been trying i've been trying to release that song since this two won't pass so three albums now wow yeah i just couldn't get it right like the chorus always felt and it was pretty close like listening to you know was that five years ago i had that demo (laughs) four years ago i had that demo it's close it's kind of got the same angsty kind of vibe but danny did an amazing job with the verses it's kind of got this cool flowy moody kind of feel now and the chorus is more of like the anthemic uh sing-along thing Mm -hmm. uh yeah and it finally made the record it was like we had like 15 kind of ideas and I was like, oh, what about even my anger has issues? Maybe like I kind of like threw it out of there. I was like, you sure you don't want to use it again? <laughs> like, and then it it finally got the pick. So yeah, an old song that finally got 
it's time to shine. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys didn't shove it to the wayside. I'm glad you guys were able to bring it back. Me too. Me too, actually. Yeah. So last but not least, the title track. Thanks, but no thanks. So thanks, but no thanks was the very last minute idea. Uh, Paige and I, my lady, the, met you the day the world ended woman, mm-hmm. um, is not a musician, but she is very good at music, even though if she heard me, she's in the other room, she would be like, you're an idiot because I'm not. <laughs> um, but she has a very good ear for it. And we were like fully into recording, like the final versions of all these songs. Um, and I guess maybe the four of the guys and I were like kind of chanting, like, oh, it'd be kind of cool. Oh, yeah, there was like this other acoustic kind of song that Greg, our bass player, wanted to like, oh, it'd be cool if it kind of like, you know, the the first nine are these anthemic, pop punky, energetic songs. It'd be cool to like end the, end the record with something slow. And we pulled up this old song I had. And I was like, yeah, this doesn't really work. And um, yeah, I, I went home to Paige and I grabbed the guitar and I was like, yeah, the guys want like this kind of slower, stripped down song. Do you mind if I just kind of sit here and just like work it out and try to just write something from nothing? And she said, go for it. And I just picked up the guitar and I started humming something and I started to say a lyric and she was like, oh, maybe do that instead there and I said, okay and then i said oh i could kind of go that way with the narrative and she's like yeah that's better than what you were doing before that was stupid and i was like, okay <laughs> and then I, we wrote it from six o'clock to seven o'clock and then we had dinner and then the next day i go back into the studio i was like yo danny i have this thing i wrote it last night and that was it recorded awesome. the song yeah that's cool she kind of got like injected into the album a yeah. little bit yeah, actually, I hope she doesn't hear this because she probably deserves writing credit, but we could just not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think she is not a musician, which is the, I've said this a lot of times in my life, is the best person to make music with because they're not like, oh, do the G7 minor mixolydian. It, you know, <laughs> it's just like, you're like, what did you say? Refrigerator? No, that's terrible. Don't say that. Maybe say something <laughs> else, you know? So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, countless things she has helped me with from artwork to lyrics to is it cool when I do that like stupid dance during that song and she's like no that is terrible don't do that anymore <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's the 10 yeah and uh, had a working title but I think we um, kind of realized halfway through that the lyrics were very uh, reminiscent of what thanks but no thanks means it's kind of uh, felt like it that kind of the song kind of wrote itself around that album mm-hmm. title so we figured it was uh yeah figured it made sense to make it an album title track yeah yeah that's awesome there was a really cool like story and breakdown to like kind of hear where the headspace was for like the artists so i really appreciate you taking the time to talk to thank me. you dude anytime thanks for letting me look at these plants and your blue hair thank you <laughs> well awesome. i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and... likewise thanks for chatting Yeah, of course. Thanks, Chris.